Hello everyone. Today I want to share a little bit of information with you regarding a tool that I think is very helpful in the project management and really just the workflow management. Today we're going to take a look at Miro. It's spelled M-I-R-O. And this tool comes with a lot of great templates that can allow you and your team to collaborate very quickly. So let's dig in a little bit here. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of examples here. I'll show you what it looks like to navigate a little bit. You can actually get some free boards or what they're called. A board is something that you can work on with others by just going to Miro.com, looking at their free plans here. I think I'm paying about $15 a month for a paid plan, and that gives you additional access to some templates and some other features here. However, I worked with the free board for quite a while. This is my Miro landing page. And what that means, it's all of these boards that I have built and that I'm actively working with. So along the top, when I first log in, here's where the templates are, where it says create a board. And then down below, these are the boards that are already in progress for me. I'm gonna show you one that I think is really helpful to use with a retrospective. Now, when we're talking about a retrospective in project management, we're talking about getting the project team together and looking back and saying what went well, what could have gone better. This board is actually called the Start Stop Continue board. I'm gonna click on it and you'll see an example here. This could be great, especially if you're meeting virtually with your team. You could start brainstorming. What should the team start doing? What should the team stop doing? And what should the team continue doing? As many of you may know, a retrospective is a very common type of ceremony when you're using Scrum project management. And so taking the time to capture these lessons learned is critical, especially if you're using sprints or time boxes to deliver in increments. You do this right after your sprint wraps up. That way, as you move into future sprints or phases of the project, whatever you're referring to them as, you keep getting better and better and better. So continuous improvement. So again, this is the board here, and it's really easy to work with. You could drag these little sticky notes around here, and you could keep adding sticky notes. You can use these little plus signs here to make the board bigger. There was a little plus sign that I clicked on to make it longer. And then if I wanna add over here to the side of it, you look for this little blue plus sign here. If I click on that, it can add another lane. And again, there's all of these little features over here. If I click on the top one, it shows me templates. That would be if I want to start a new template or another board is what they're called. If I click below that, there's the text. So I could just click that text box. And you'll see that I could type anywhere I want on this board. I could change the color of the font. I can make the font bigger if I want. So if you're adding additional lanes to this board, it's currently set up as a start, stop, continue. Maybe you want another one in there. You, that's how you would add additional text. You could just drag it up above the lane here. Down below that, these are the sticky notes that you see on the board. So if I wanna add another one, I can just click on whatever color I want, add that to the board, and then it's ready for me to type on. So you'll see I've got that typed there. Below that, we've got some shapes. I could add stars, arrows, anything that I want for the shapes. Below that, I've got some arrows. So if I wanna draw attention to something, I can just draw that arrow, point it in the right direction, and it'll remain on the board. Below that, I've got kind of a pen feature. So if I wanna write on the board, especially if you're collaborating with others and you want everyone to write something on the board, a great feature here. Again, you could change the colors here the size of the tip of the marker, 
anything that you want there. If I want to add a comment, then you can click this comment box. Click somewhere, it allows you to add a comment. Now, if I want to navigate around the actual board itself, I want to right click. So you'll see I'm right clicking and then I can just drag. So hold down the right click. It allows me to drag around to different sections of the board itself. And if I want to zoom in down here in the right hand corner, I can zoom in if I want. I've got it at 100% now. And then if I right click again, I can go ahead and drag around. So this is just one example of the many templates that you can find on Miro. Um, feel free to continue to explore. Again, if you go into a board, you can click the templates here to look for additional templates. To get back to the home page, if I go up and click on Miro, the logo here, it's going to take me back to the main page. I can just click on new board if I'd like. That's also going to take me into a blank board um, where I could select a template if I'd like, or I could just close out and work with a blank board. To search templates, just do keyword here. So if I want to see everything that's related to a project, I type in project, click enter, project canvas, project kickoff, lots and lots of templates. Again, I am on a paid plan. So if you are using a free plan, some of these may be limited for your use. Um, just be mindful of that. I really, again, I appreciate this. It's great for collaboration. I'm going to go back into my retrospective board here because how I want to collaborate with others is important. And if I go up here to the upper right hand corner, it's got my picture, that's my profile. It's got share. I'm gonna click on share here. And you can share a link to this board with others to collaborate. So I can copy a board link and email that over, instant message that over to others. And it's going to allow me to work with them virtually. Now, make sure that you're mindful of the link access. So if you look here, you want to set the access. Anyone can view, can comment, can edit, no access at all. So if you want others to be able to put things on the board with you, anyone with the link can edit. You'll see here the board is public. So the second you share that link, regardless of who has that link, they can come in here and edit the board. I hope this overview of Miro was helpful. Working in a virtual world, we need to find ways to collaborate with others, whether it's our day-to-day -day team, our project team, working you know, on a specific type of project. Um, it can be so helpful to have these collaborative tools. Now, I am not affiliated with Miro in any way, shape, or form, but again, it's one that I have found really helpful and useful. Feel free to explore those templates and get creative about how you collaborate with others. I am Candace Porter. Thank you for joining me today. I cover all things project management on this channel. So please follow by subscribing, clicking on that little bell below. And I hope to see you joining me for future videos. Thanks so much.